temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You guys need to drop a Bible. What? Matt, you've been training me to not bring a Bible for years. Well, we have little Bibles in the few months. So... Your phone's fine. Go, go just go to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. House of God, victory through weakness. How many people feel like they're in a fight? Mommy! Feel like they're in a fight. Lou, you feel like you're in a fight? Who else feels like they're in a fight? Do you guys know that's a good sign? Why would that be a good sign? They just rely on God for help. Yeah, yeah, that would be one good thing, right? Our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against power and spells. You can't read ahead. <laughs> Just, just gain them <laughs> You know I'm leading us into the fight, right? You guys know that? This whole since February stuff, we've been going through the joys of Ephesians 1 and 2 and 3, and last week we did the joys of Ephesians 4. But why is there Ephesians 6? Because if we're going to do the stuff of Ephesians 1, 2, 3, 4, the practical stuff of 5, there's a reason Paul stuck the armor of God fight the devil passage at the end of that whole talk, isn't there? Or was it just like, oh, I've been meaning to tell the church, I've been meaning to tell the church that the devil fights them, so I should throw it in here. Does God brand them like that? No. So for you guys who have been missing, We've just been looking at some very clear teaching out of 2 Corinthians 6 that says you're the temple and God wants to dwell in and live among you. So therefore, um, cleanse yourselves of all defilements of flesh and spirit and perfect holiness in the fear of God. And the implication is, since we have these promises, since God wants to live and dwell powerfully among you, cleanse yourselves of all defilements and perfect holiness in the fear of God. We've used that theme of the House of God theme, and we've just been looking at it from different directions. You know, what does it mean to be the House of God? What does it mean to get to where Paul's talking about there when he says, cleanse yourselves of the defilements of flesh and spirit, and get holy? What does that mean? So, um, I mentioned that it was going to get awkward. Um, have I made good on that? Okay. Um, not awkward for the sake of being awkward. But we're just not going to shy away from the stuff that's got to be done and said in order for us to get there. Otherwise, Ephesians 6. Let's talk about this. Let's read Ephesians 6, starting in 10. I'm just going to throw this first up. So let's kind of read along together. I'm in the uh, final pew Bible thing here. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the, His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you may take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, Stand firm then with the belt of truth, buckle around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert, and always keep on praying for all the saints. And then pray for me that I can... Sure. Yeah. 
share the gospel boldly without fear. So, just ask a basic question, kind of launch it off me. Right away at the top, he says, Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Um, how do you get that strength? I know I've got a clue up there. But I want today to be a bit of a dialogue. I actually don't have that much material here because I'm looking for us to interact on this. The reason is, the more you talk, the more you convince yourself of what I'm saying. <laughs> That's a fact. So, but how do we be strong in the Lord? What does that mean? How does that, how do we, how do we do that? How? How do we be strong in the Lord? I obey Don't him. depend on yourself, right? Obeying Him, yeah. Not depending, not depending on yourself. That's going to be huge, for sure. Following His commands. Okay, obedience. Yeah, following His commands. Looking to others for help. Okay, looking for God's people to help along the way, because then our strength may not be sufficient, so other people may, and, and God does arrange. You for, actually put it in better words than even I could have. Um, <laughs> thank you, John. I know, I'm sorry, John. Yeah, yeah, that kind of idea. Recognizing weakness, our weaknesses. Recognizing our weaknesses, okay. Giving up our own strength. So let's just let's just look at another passage real quick. So, so Paul had a visionary experience, and after that, God gave him a thorn in the flesh. And three times I pleaded with the Lord about this that it should leave me. But He said to me, "My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me." Okay, what does this passage reveal about? Strength in the Lord. Being weak, being devoid of pride and, and self sufficiency, so that the Lord will be the one who reigns and rules and does the work through you. Yeah. So, so my weakness is the key to the strength of the Lord in me? Yeah, you've got to get out of the way. So. <laughs> okay. Let's look at one more. But God gives more grace. Therefore it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Just look at these words as they kind of connect to each other. Okay? I'm going to do this way. Okay, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Okay, so whose strength are we supposed to operate under? Okay. Is He saying that we do not have strength? Is he saying that at all? No. No, he's just saying when it comes down to it, whose strength should you be using? Yeah, pretty, pretty basic there. So then in this passage, you know, he's saying, my God, Jesus says, my, my grace is sufficient for you. Why is Jesus' grace sufficient? Why? Why? This is the four part, but like why? Just reading it there. He is all we need. He is all in all? Yes, he is all we need. So the passage just says this, right? It says, my grace is sufficient for you for, because, because, my power is, is made perfect in, in me. So what Paul says in Ephesians there, he's getting ready to talk about fighting the devil. And, uh, you know, the big key to power is, is what again? Weakness. Okay. <laughs> That's how it's made perfect. Yeah. His power is made um, complete, is a good word there, to whole. Or, you want a good punch? You get it from Jesus. Yeah, you can tap people. But when you want to really knock them down, perfect power comes to weakness. Now, when he says, for my power is made perfect in weakness, it's a statement of fact, isn't it? So when is it true? This is a statement of reality. God is giving us a big principal clue to how he works. You want strength? 
get weak. <laughs> you want strength. Get weak. And then what does he do? What does he do? Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. What did Paul boast in? He actually was really proud about how weak he was. Anybody here really cocky about how they're ineffective and inefficient and emotionally uh, limited and intellectually incapable? Anybody? Thank you for that hand, Justin. I'm very proud of how intellectually weak I am. <laughs> but it's not, it's not really a joke, is it? Because that's exactly what he said. We usually try to hide those things. What? We hide our weaknesses? Yes. In Christianity? Is anyone here actually kind of is anyone here actually kind of aware of their weaknesses? Like you know, somewhat? <laughs> well if you're married, usually you are. Yeah, you have to get married yeah. to find out your limitations. Yeah. Well if you did, she didn't have So we need weakness. And his grace is sufficient when there's weakness. So how do we get the grace of God to be weak? He gives more grace, therefore it says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to who? Humble. Humble. Okay, so you see how this all connects a little bit? I allow myself to be humble enough to say, I can't. <laughs> okay, I allow myself to get to what might be called a breaking point. Oh, I just ruined it. Listen. What? Ruined it? No, a little bit. Okay. I did. Okay. It's just I want to. I just need. I need a punch, guys. I need some power to be made perfect. You know what I'm saying? You guys know what I'm saying? You're asking the wrong people. I volunteered well, to punch you. We're talking about it. We're talking about it right now. Okay. I have a confession to make. This is my confession. Can you see the wisdom in it? <laughs> this is why. Okay. <coughs> Stay with me here, okay? <laughs> I have been weakening this church. Why do I say that? Well, you guys let me talk every Sunday. I don't know why. I think you're silly. I think it's a silly job. But I just read through Timothy and Titus and was reminded that this is one of God's things that he asks us to do sometimes. So, so God gets a donkey to get up there and bray, and God rides in on the donkey. So I'm your donkey, okay? <laughs> and right now this donkey has been hee-hawn. Hey, Ella, what sound does a donkey make? This donkey has been braying one thing since February 12. What have I been braying? <laughs> what have I been braying? Christ is all in all. <laughs> Justin's too weak to know what braying means. Same. Guys, we need to die to ourselves so we can live to the power of God. But we have been remarkably resilient to our own death. Okay, okay. Let me say it this way. I'm trying to kill us, and we just keep coming back to life. <laughs> Whose life? Our own life. The moral of the story is, just hurry up and die already. We sat around in a circle. I guess it was the last time we were all here together. And, and we told God some things. I led you guys to say some things, you know, about wanting to be the house of God and having him come help us and stuff. But what we need is a miracle <laughs> to get our hearts to the place 
where it's not just Matt saying this stuff. Because we've been bringing these scriptures out, haven't we? So this is a God idea. At bare minimum, this is a God idea. That we've been bringing from God. And the only way we're going to get to that point where the power of God is made perfect is if we die to ourselves. Now, we do need to need God together, not just some of us. Here's where I'm going with this. This is an us thing. Isn't church an us thing? I mean, we can all be our own Christians on our own, because we can, can't we? Can't we? But God's wisdom is to take it to a level that only He can do. And so when you get it to the level that only He can do, He says, I will build my church. But who's going to build His church? I will build my church. Jesus, I will build. So Jesus is, is going to build his church. So we've got to get to this point where we need God together. In the church of Sardis in Revelation 3, Jesus said, um, you guys have the reputation of being alive, but actually you're dead. <laughs> I know your works. You're dead. But there are some of you who walk in white. But the implication is, but as a church, you're actually dead. Jesus is differentiating the fact that individually we can be doing great, but corporately there's an us thing that God's trying to do with us. And that thing he's trying to do is get weak enough. Get weak enough. Get weak enough. Get weak enough. Acknowledge our weakness. Not like Sardis for some walks in life. So... Let's, 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 let's evaluate this a little bit. Guys, are we effectively resisting Satan right now? Let's ask that question. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with all the elements on. Okay. Talk it out with me. Where are we effectively resisting Satan? Throw it out. In your mind. No, 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 no not theoretically. We've got to talk practically right now. Okay. Evaluating where we are. Where is OLBC at 272 Oxcart Trail and the people who call this home effectively resisting Satan. Matt, we are effectively resisting Satan in his schemes in this way. As a group, not in our Let's take it to the group level. <laughs> the devil's scheme was to keep us away from gathering, and we beat the devil today. Thank you, Alex, the guest. <laughs> okay, so having started it off a little bit, the schemes of the devil, where are we effectively resisting the schemes of the devil? Communing with God on a daily basis, and living a lifestyle for him, not just on Sundays, but throughout the week. Right, that would fight the schemes. Yeah. It's a good kind of, theory. It's kind of difficult, though, to do it effectively when you know, we only gather for a couple of hours on a Sunday. What's I the rest of the week? You know. I believe it should it'd be good to meet. I mean, it's they used to meet on a daily day basis, but yeah. it's not everyone's called to do different things. Yeah. So, if we can uh, fit it all into two hours, then maybe we could resist and double, but I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, you're really right on that. There's a lot of just foundational things that still have to be worked out. Well, right, and just the way that people's lives were like physically not close together, <laughs> except on the phone. Sure. I know that there has been times when there's been us in the group where we call each other and you know stuff that's going on in each other's lives, and we do pray for each other, and that is resisting. Yes, that's true. Good. good. And when we reach out to each other, we're like, hey, this is a really hard time. This is what's going on. I and help. <laughs> but when we try to like keep to ourselves and we don't share our troubles, then it's hard to stand together. I think we, we do get too busy 
with worldly things, and they kind of sometimes take priority over, you know, God. Because all of my worldly things are important. Don't be touching. <laughs> that's so what we need to. Them. That's what we need to put on the cross. The devil is not scheming me to be involved in everything. That's me. We're, we're, we're kind of locked into this system, and we, we, we need to get out of it, but it's a difficult thing to do, and only God can help us get out of it. When, when he says that we effectively got out of this system, but you can work yourself into another system. Where you, are. you guys have been there six, eight months now. So, yeah. so you can continue on that busyness somewhere else, yeah. and and... It is a scheme of the devil, and you really have to fight against it. And and you think, okay, we're we're we've left what we're doing here now, and you go and you yep. can get back into that mm -hmm. so quickly. You totally Even on the mission field, yeah. where you think yeah. that everything shouldn't be that way. What well, the definition of busy is being under Satan's yoke. <laughs> yeah. I need to write that down. <laughs> Good thing I'm never busy. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Does lazy have an act? <laughs> Please, let's not get into this. <laughs> Touche, Sherry. I felt like I was ready for at least half a second. Uh, yeah, okay. <clears throat> okay, and my question here is open-ended. I'm not, I'm not driving for necessarily. But, but could we just take it to the larger picture that we've been painting here since February, where, where God's fullness is resting on us and he is doing his ministries out of us, where Jesus is doing his ministries out of us. Have we gotten there? Like, are we there? Okay, one other way to look at it is, is Paul says you stand. Okay, he says it like four or five times, right? Not the armor of God, stand. The devil's got these schemes, stand. Stand, 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 stand. What's the image? Images, we're standing, and the devil is pushing. So you kind of got this image of losing ground. So let's just be honest. Like, where are we losing ground? Shouldn't that be a little more obvious? Where as a church are we losing ground? From the devil pushing. Sorry? Unity. Unity as a church. I wouldn't disagree with that. <coughs> Which is why last week was meant to again identify the center point. We can't gather even against the devil. We're all going to stand against the devil. That's not actually the rallying cry. We're all going to be strong in the Lord and the strength of His might. That's a rallying cry. You see the difference? We're all going to reach this town for Jesus. That's not a rallying cry. We're going to stand together in the strength of the Lord, and the Lord is going to build His church. That's a rallying cry. Do you guys see the difference? Like when you're talking, all I'm thinking of is is the, the Israelites marching around Jericho and waiting for the Lord uh, to save. Holler. So. That's a really good. And a miracle happened. A miracle happened. I'm driving this toward a miracle. Okay? <laughs> I'm not saying that we're going to be able to do whatever we're talking about here today. Weakness will set us up for being an empty vessel that the Lord can fill with His strength. Guys, are we losing ground on. Let's just use some of those. Are we losing ground on reaching the people who are dying and going to Hades of this town? How, how's that going? How are we doing on that? Yeah. How dare you say that? The church is filled with the new converts of the Lord to us. Normally you blame the coach. Well, guess what the coach is doing? They're taking us back to Jesus. <laughs> How are we doing on reaching the lost people of Oakland? I don't know if you can reach the lost unless you actually have a burden for the lost. Mm -hmm. Whose burden would you have to have? Jesus' burden. Well, you have to be totally full of Jesus in order for the boss to actually look at you and go, hey, there's something there that I want. Did that happen in Acts 2? Yeah. <laughs> and that, I think, is the big issue, is we 
we look at ourselves and we feel completely inadequate because we don't have, we're not full of Jesus. If you Why take would a, anybody be attracted to it? No, <laughs> you take a tire. We've all mounted tires, haven't we? Ruth, you mounted a tire? All right, we'll just imagine it, Ruth. You're mounting a tire, and you stick the tire iron just right there. And then you stick the big, you know, hose right up to it, and you give it a good blast. The tire iron is in there. <laughs> and where does all that blast go? Where does all that fullness of air go? Probably shoots that tire iron back at your throat. <laughs> Guys, we've got to fill up some of these holes in order to be full. We've got to admit some weakness and say, God, we have some holes in our vessel. We have some holes in the vessel. But if we say, no, Lord, everything's great. We're doing fine. Come fill. What's at stake? You tell me. What is at stake? Is it just the people of Oak Lake, Manitoba? How are our families doing on resisting Satan? I'm not saying anybody to sit up and pipe up about your individual situation. I'm not asking that. I'm just saying, ask the question. How are our families doing in effectively resisting Satan? Like washing each other with the word and praying together and, you know, living trying according to the word, reflecting his word. Trying to raise godly offspring. Mm -hmm. The devil loves to get hold of your kids. The devil doesn't care about the kids. <laughs> How are our families doing in effectively resisting Satan? Dear head coach of every family, how is your family doing on resisting Satan? Where are you losing ground? What's at stake here, guys? What's at stake? Is this a serious situation? Are we having an adult conversation this morning? Okay. So Matt harping over and over since February 12th on let's, let's become the house of God where God fills it unto his eternal purpose of displaying the life of Jesus out is unto some very practical goals that would benefit everything, everywhere. Great. was the same like the, the burden of the loss I don't know keeping that vision fresh like when we first moved here like it was such it was such a prayer it was such a prayer of mine like um and with especially with the adults it's continued on with the kids but I've kind of lost the vision for some of the adults that got brought in my life um and so like even with our families like we I feel like we all kind of get either convicted or God shows us things on a Sunday or at different times and we pursue it for a while and then the word, you know, that whole seeds on the different things. Something comes in and snatches it away. And so just asking for a refreshed vision, God, a refreshed vision for pursuing in our family, a fresh vision for pursuing in our town. Just grace to keep it right here and not let it go back yeah. here. And then that other list, too, that's in there that says the bitterness, the anger, the rage, the unforgiveness, all of those things that can seep into a person's life very suddenly. And then all of a sudden, you're in a place where you have no burden for anything. Mm -hmm. Again, I am trying to weaken us. Okay? I'm, not, I'm not trying to make it all heavy and all that stuff for the sake of heavy stuff. If we can get to the point of weakness, what might might be able to happen is, is we might call out for another person's strength. Don't we need someone else's strength? Isn't Satan pushing us around? Let me just throw some things that I was pondering at. Where are we effectively resisting even our own self rule You guys know that question? I've been bringing it up over and over again here, but I rule me. And then God asked me to hand that rulership over to him. But I always want to rule myself. Where am I even resisting my own self? 
Or am I still in charge of everything? Again, getting us to that weak spot. Weak. I'm weak against my own will. Anybody amen me on that? My own will, I have a hard time resisting. <laughs> if at all. In everything. Where are we losing ground in our ability to rule ourselves? Let me just share a thought on this one. Guys, okay, so, so an opportunity comes up. An opportunity comes up. Or uh, the will of the Father, right? We just did that Lord's Prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Or my own will, okay? I cave to my own will. Now, in that area, in that situation, in that place in my heart, I cave to my own will. You know what that does? That, that not only creates a habit, right? Doesn't that create a habit? I have the opportunity to give to God's will. I gave it to my will. That creates a habit. But it also creates like this little stronghold around that area of my heart. That's where the strongholds come from in our lives is when I give myself over to anything that's not God. It forms a stronghold in that area. So, we need God in order. We really need God in order to know how weak we are. Now, i got to talk about weakness a little bit. Would you mind helping me? It's all handled. We all focus. Okay. <laughs> Alright. We really need God in order to know how we can go. Can I get an amen on that one? We need God in order to know how weak we really are. What where are we going? Okay. I'm gonna read this thing and we gotta explain it. Okay. God is not strong when we're relying on ourselves, on our on our self strength. If we're too weak to stand against ourselves or Satan. We are weakly relying on our own strength, but blind to the kind of weakness that gives us his strength. So I need to explain that a little bit. So, so let's say, um, like if I ask a question, uh, if I ask a question, you know, what things are you uncomfortable with? We would all name a list of things, right? What things do we feel like we can't do? We would all name a list of things, right? So we know that there's areas that we were struggling and we have uncomfort or we don't feel sufficient or adequate. Um, Sherry, you're doing the church books. Do you feel adequate to the task? Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> okay. I had to apologize to you. No. All right. So, so you see where we're kind of going? We can acknowledge that. Okay. I'm weak in this earth. But... But what do we do if we acknowledge that we have a weak spot, but we let it rule us? Here's where I'm going. Sherry says, I'm weak. I'm too weak to handle the church books. Therefore, I either quit or complain about it every time <laughs> I do something with it. Okay, okay, okay. But, but what, I'm, what I'm driving toward in this example, thank you, Sherry, for being so gracious. <laughs> But if, then we came to that point where this did happen because I came back from Reggie's office and it can just be a tiring process and I was like, God, I, I actually can't do this and you just have to do it. And then the next time I went in there with Reg, it was much more peaceful. It was like, it was okay here. So, God does win when you say I can't do it. Okay. You have to. Guys, we got to get to the I can't. If I just acknowledge my weakness and never get to the I cannot before God, it's not the kind of weakness that gives strength. You guys see what I'm saying there? Simply acknowledging that I, I, oh, I'm terrible at such and such, therefore I will stay away. Do you guys feel adequate for Haiti? Okay. So, therefore, no one should go to Haiti because no one's adequate for it. You see, see where this doesn't work anymore? I have to bring my weaknesses to a place where now I acknowledge them before God and, and, and ask Him to strengthen me that we carry. Do you see where this is going? I can feel insufficient, but if I don't bring myself to that place where I say, Lord, be my sufficiency, and then walk forward in faith. 
this isn't the kind of weakness that filled up Paul with the strength of the Lord. So when he says, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, we don't just keep caving to Satan. We don't keep caving to the schemes. We say, I keep caving to the schemes. Therefore, Lord, come save me. Rescue with your power. Now, I have debated for 160 hours <laughs> if I should use last week as an example for us or not in our weeks. And in the end, it's just too good of an opportunity for us to learn a valuable lesson on this very subject. Last week was Verdon Baptist Church. And it was an opportunity to go be around some other people and have a service for what it's worth and, and mingle a little bit and, and, and just, yeah. I kind of think God's doing something with that group and us and so it just seems right to go there. Now, what did last week reveal about our weaknesses? Um, you know, I promised that I would never have time. I broke my promise last week in order to teach this this week. <laughs> we didn't really come as a church, did we, last week? Oh, Matt, where are you going to go? Are you going to make fun of me? No, no, no. This is a great opportunity. Because I know, I, know, I know a lot of the feeling that probably went down last week. And I'm not saying, I'm not trying to blanket it. and Whatever, if you had other stuff going on last week, I'm, that's fine. I'm just saying. I know that there's this place where it's like there's a lot of new people. It's a new environment, and it's 23 kilometers away, and it's just a little bit much for me, so we are going to take this opportunity to be a family. What does that reveal about our weaknesses, if my little dialogue applied to anyone here last week? There was a weakness, an acknowledged weakness. Did it reach the point of breakthrough in the strength of the Lord? That's a question. Did it? How then, just, just, cause we're having an adult conversation, we're having a heart to heart here, right? How, how are we going to reach the town of Oak Lake if we can't even drive to Perth to meet with Christians? Is it okay to ask that question? You want an actor. <laughs> we'll make it rhetorical for the moment. <laughs> Do you see why this is a great learning opportunity? Okay, I'm not trying to set up a judgment here. But if we can learn, can we be ahead further? Remember what I said a long time ago, if we treat the small things like big things, we gain ground faster? Do you guys remember when I said that? Okay, so so I'm not trying to turn it into a big thing. What I'm trying to do is take a little opportunity for us to say, as a church, not many opportunities, this is why I had to take this one. Not many opportunities where, as a church, we get to evaluate so clearly where we're at and what's going on. So we don't want to be blind to the kind of weakness that gives the chance for God's strength. So we are at this wonderful point to ask, will our church embrace our weakness <laughs> and, and experience the strength of the Lord. And experience the strength of the Lord. There's a faith thing in that. When I get weak, will God fill me with strength? And, and according to Micah 7, he actually leaves us in the weak place for a while. And according to the Psalms, over and over again, he says, wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. Oh my soul, wait on the Lord. God leaves us kind of lingering in the weakness and we're like, but I feel weak. And then what happens? Suddenly, perspective and revelation and, and the opposite feelings and the, the abilities, they start flowing in. And we know that they're not me. Because I was so weak for a long time, languishing in that dark place, and then suddenly light started breaking in, and I knew it was the light of someone who is powerful enough. And I start to feel strength. And you know where it actually ends up going? 
where I hope we can hope we can get to as a church in this Ephesians 6 passage is it fills us with such a strength that suddenly we start swinging the sword and we start saying no to the devil and no to self-rule and it works it, it works suddenly we start getting free other people start getting free and townspeople start getting free but we had to get to that weak place we had to get to that weak place. Guys, resurrection comes after death. <laughs> okay? We want breakthrough. We gotta break down. Gotta break down. Can I embrace my weaknesses? Or do I defend them? <laughs> do I defend my weaknesses? What's that gonna do to strength? and chop it in the knees. And the devil's just too good at this game, isn't he? He's too good at this game. But I know someone who invented the game, who controls all the pieces. Okay, are we going to embrace our weakness? I just, you know, are we going to hold on to our self-effort, our comfort zones, our personality traits? Oh, I'm not really that kind of person. Personal histories, oh, you know, I did this once, I failed this way once. Traditions, expectations for what church is, and, and be denied. What's at stake? Power. Power. And if the power of God does not rest on us, what is all of the other ramifications of not having the power of God? It gets ugly quick. At what cost? When will we embrace this? Yes, please. I said that she can go when you're done talking. Yeah, but I'm not done talking. Sorry. Now she knows how everybody else feels. When? When? Okay. At what cost? When will we embrace weakness? Guys, you know. I just gotta take it back to the seriousness. It's okay if it takes back to the seriousness. Guys, we're on a countdown. We're on a countdown. We're on a countdown. Let me give you a couple countdowns. Let me give you a couple countdowns. Which I've taken to the Lord and I'm comfortable enough before Him that I can say them out loud with you guys now. Okay, we're on a countdown. Um, the church, financially, is going backwards fast enough that sometime in the next 12 to 18 months we'll just be out of cash. When that happens, who knows? A lot of things could happen, a lot of things could not happen, or maybe we don't get to that point. Right now, we're working on our permanent residence, and maybe you guys want us to go back to the States. I'm not saying you want us to stay. <laughs> but if we don't get our permanent residence this year, and the church runs out of money, Matt and Sherry trundle off back down south. Um, that's not all bad, is it? Maybe I should ask that question. I'm, I'm at peace with that. I don't feel like I've got to have a job. I don't feel like I've got to have a Christian job. I'm a pastor and you guys can't afford me. I'm just going to go find somewhere else that will. Okay? That's not my heart. I never wanted this job. <laughs> and then God grabbed me, eventually by the throat, because I was really resistant. <laughs> but because I know that he grabbed me, I know I'm supposed to be here, at least for this time. So let's run that scenario. Let's say Matt and Sherry leave. That's fine. But won't that change things around this church? You see what I'm not doing? I'm not pointing toward me. I'm just saying. There's an impending change. A pause. Who's going to step up? Step up and do what? saying there won't be people. But it's the question that's in front, right? What about, okay, so we get our permanent residence. Matt can work. Matt does part-time work, maybe some part-time church. Okay, great. Gonna get a whole lot less Matt. 
whole lot less mail. Is that all bad? Maybe not. Maybe that'd be perfect. Maybe that'd be right to think. That just could be just great. Well, then who's going to step up? Because you're getting a whole lot less mail. <laughs> Which is preluded by weakness. So this embracing of weakness, this this allowing ourselves to say, I can't, it's the open door to power. But we need to embrace not just the seriousness of our situation as a church financially or whatever. I really, it's not really not a big deal to me in my heart, in my heart. But, along the way, as we go, have we soaked up enough of the heart of God so that we have that fight spirit that we're going to stand against Satan as a church? <coughs> stand. 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 Do you see what I'm trying to do? If Matt leaves, I want to leave one nice lesson and message to this church. You all are a group, and you are called to stand on the heavenly ground of being full of Jesus and for the purpose of the display of the life of God against the schemes of the devil. Or, we leave, and everybody just wanders off. Which can happen. We've got to get to this place where we're going to resist. It's not even Satan sometimes that needs resistance. It's my own heart that needs. <laughs> it's the me. It's the me. It's the me that needs resistance. <laughs> We've heard the joke or the cliche, I'm my own worst enemy. To embrace, yes, Lord. I am my own worst enemy. <laughs> Therefore, kill me. <laughs> Stomp upon your enemies and foes, I being standing in first line. <laughs> if we can get there, if we can get there, then the power of God can rescue us. You guys, you guys understand what's going on here? You guys understand that? See what I'm saying? Okay. I'll say it again. I'm not... I think I've actually only said this in personal conversations. In, 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 in my view, whatever it's worth, whatever it's worth, in my view, I'm not so much worried about setting up ministries and programs because the church is formed inwardly. Isn't it? Isn't God's house built inside? Isn't that the passages we've been studying? You will become, you are being built into the dwelling place of God by His Spirit. And if we become the dwelling place of God by His Spirit, then He can display His manifold wisdom in fullness out of the church, which is the fullness of Him who fills everything in every way. That's beautiful. So, so let's take it from this angle. Is that why we get together? This is kind of where we've been hammering. Is that why? Okay, everybody here showed up Sunday morning at 11.22. Sorry, bro. And why did we come? Because we were supposed to? Because it's the Christian thing to do? Because I like the people? Wash one another, right? Yeah, okay, so maybe, all right. But this is where I'm going, guys. So we wrap up. Lead us in some prayers. This is where we're going. For us all to show up at our one chance to gather together as a people. Our purpose, our standing together, is so that God can dwell among us and we can display his life out of us unto the fullness of Christ Jesus. If there's any other reason for showing up on a Sunday, I'm saying it's impure. Im impure in the sense that it's not standing on that which Ephesians is describing and we've been going over and over and over and over again. The reason God builds his house is so that he can live in it. And he's living in it so that he can display himself out of it. And he's not just 
sprinkling his life out, it is unto fullness. The fullness of who? Jesus Christ. So that he can fill everything and everything. So I'm saying that again. I'm saying that again. I gotta harp on this one just a little bit. Why did you come this morning? You guys see that it's wisdom, it's the wisdom of God to give us one good reason to come together. And that reason is Him. To fill us unto His fullness. Any other reason? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. So, finally be strong in the Lord and the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God so you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that he should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly in my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest on me. But he gives more grace, therefore it says, God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. Okay, this is all we're going to do. My goal today was to weaken us. I don't know how weak we're going to end up being after just one more of these talks. <laughs> but each week, I keep chipping away. You guys see what I'm doing, right? I'm chipping away at our foundations of why and what and for whom and to what purpose and to how to know what we're doing so that we can get weak. I don't want us to feel like we're doing well within ourselves. Because God's trying to display himself. So, so, if we're going to hold on to ourselves in any way, it's going to undermine everything that God wants to do. And that is an absolute truth. Isn't it? If I hold on to myself in any way, it undermines everything God's trying to do. Isn't that true? <coughs> Isn't that true? So, to release myself. <laughs> and to acknowledge that I cannot, that my weaknesses. To humble myself. And to boast in my weaknesses so that the power of God can rest on us. Guys, do we even know what it's like to have the power of God rest on us? Maybe a little bit sometimes. You guys who are parents who prayed for your kids, you know what it means. There's times when you've really had some powerful pray times for your kids and you're like, wow, that was God's prayer power over my kids. That was something bigger than me. To have that as a church... And not just be a closet, quiet thing. Would stand against Satan, wouldn't it? <laughs> That's where we're going. To stand as a church. Ephesians 6 is written to a church. It's written to a church. It's written to a body of people. Who are all standing together. Not going, guys, again, we're not going for perfection. It doesn't matter if we've got sin stuff along the way. There's the blood of Jesus. It doesn't matter if we're struggling. We've got strength. We have encouragement. We have each other. We have the Lord. I'm just saying, the goal is still the goal. The goal is still the goal, to get to this place where we are strong in the Lord. Do you know what Sundays would be like if we just came in and we were strong in the Lord? We wouldn't have to keep talking about weaknesses and getting through these heavy messages week after week. Because when the strength of the Lord is there, it's supernatural. It's, you know that the Lord is strong and He can do everything. And then the church grabs one sword, one sword of the Spirit, and it swings it. Our pray times in the middle of our service are meant to be sword-holding, church-swinging, one sword in one direction as directed by the Spirit. Sword of the Spirit. And tear down strongholds. But more often than not, it's show up. Matt tries to beat us up, and I resist. <laughs> Have you ever actually seen this in a church? Ever? Yeah. 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 Three answers. Acts 2 yeah. and 4. I mean, you like... <laughs> the Moravian Church, 1720s to okay. 1880s. Okay, I read about that, yeah. And 2008 and 
was the apartments of 112 and 42. <clears throat> and we swung a mean, we swung a mean sword. And um, that Bible verse that we read out of Second Corinthians says, Since we have these promises, dear friends, let's purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. What we saw there was a group of about eight of us that absolutely dominated the impurities of our lives. We totally cast off the distractions of the world. We were gathering for prayer. Out of that, I can name about five people who came to Jesus from our neighbors and our associates, and also just miraculous people that just came up along the way, like random, like like at a birthday party and someone asks a Jesus question leading to six months of intense three-hour Bible studies, which led to more salvations. So this wasn't in a typical church setting? Did not make it into the church setting. Sounds like more of a home setting. Would that we can take it to Acts 4, where they gathered at the temple to hear the apostles teaching, and then broke bread in each other's homes day to day. And they committed themselves to pray. And in Acts 4, when they prayed, remember what happened to the room? They had an earthquake. Acts 2 it got windy, but Acts 4, there was an earthquake. Do we want to go there? Or would that be a little too awkward? Yeah, it's pretty exciting. I mean, that's a hard question, isn't it? Do we really want to go there, Matt? Well, I think that's the point. That's where, you're right, like you can go out and try to witness people without any of that, and you have very mixed and infected results, right? Because it's not real. But if you have that, then people know it. They recognize it. Out of Acts they either 4, hate it or they love it. <laughs> right. Out of Acts 4 came another 5,000 converts, if you read the passage. Out of Acts 2 came 3,000 converts. And out of Acts 2 and 4, it says repeatedly from Luke, and they added to their number. This will eventually get to the streets. God fills. It always goes to the streets. And then you're going to need a lot of homes. <laughs> All that's running through my head <clears throat> for the last five minutes is where your treasure is, there shall your heart be. Where is our heart? Do we treasure this kind of talk? Or does it seem too foreign, too weird, too much, Matt? Too much, Matt. That sounds too intense. That sounds like more of these intense Sundays and I can't handle it. That's an honest answer, isn't it? It's an honest answer. But that's a weak answer. That's a weak answer that needs to be taken to the Lord for a dying. I think an encouraging thing is God's Word never changes. And He's given lots of examples when they come to the end of themselves. And probably the one that sticks most in my mind is the Red Sea. Oh, yeah, Who would ever sure. think that they part the Red Sea so they could be escaped and then He put the water back mm -hmm. in on the people who are trying to do away with there's multiple times like that that God has done it. But yeah. He does stuff that we can never begin to comprehend. We'd be wanting to build a bridge, not open the sea. <laughs> that's you know, that's but, awesome. You know, so we do have to realize that our thoughts, his thoughts are, our thoughts aren't his thoughts, and he can do things that we would never be able to, but we have to come to the end of ourselves. That's a great wrap up. I'm not going to add any more. We need to get to this place where our back is against the ocean of impossible forward progress, and there's the pressure of the enemy. Can we just say this? Isn't this act of Ephesians 6? And there's the pressure of the enemy coming, ready to destroy. To get to that point and cry out. The closer it is to Christ's return, the harder the enemy is going to push. And the more likely that we'll see the waters. Doesn't have to be theory, guys. 2008 and 9 wasn't a joke. No.
not giving you guys theories. We're going to talk to God. I'm just going to ask us, yes, individually, quietly within our own hearts. But then I am going to ask, do we want to pray some things together? I know we've already done this, but is God listening in on this kind? Let's pray. Here we go. Holy Spirit, you are the great revealer of the wisdom of God. You are the great revealer of your plan. You're the great revealer of Jesus, who is to be for us wisdom and life. Holy Spirit, these talks here are bent on one purpose, to evaluate our own view of our own needs and to shed light on our hearts. What do we really want? God, seven days now, I guess, we're going to go up back here. Maybe. Why? And Lord, I'm not expecting us to get all of this done in one day. I'm just saying, Lord, will we come together? God, this is our heart's cry. <laughs> will we come together for your purpose? And it's not just the coming together at a, at a gathering that's church, God. That's ridiculous. You fill us so that you may be all and in all. Well, all includes all seven days. What will you do if you could fill us all in all ways for all days of the week? What would we do for each other? What would we do as an act of service? What would we do that would push back Satan? If you were really all known. Okay, what I want us to do, I want us to get to that point of weakness. So whatever you need to do, you can imagine something, like maybe imagine... Uh, the armor of God on you, and then um, you might imagine like a hole in one of the armors. Ask God right now, Lord, where is there a hole in my armor? An area that I am weak, that I'm defending, or I'm not aware of, or that I've been aware of, but now you're showing me even today. Ask God that question, if you will. God, where is there a hole in my armor? Where is there a tire and iron in my tire? If he's shown you something, then what actually probably will happen is a wrestle or a fight because you're about to resist an area that the devil has access to you on, and he's not going to give it up easily. So he'll distract you. He'll help you defend it. But you just got to let light shine on it. Ask for light. Ask for light. Ask for the power of God that brings light to come and shine on that hole in the armor. Because everywhere that light shines, it reveals what's there and creates light. We wear an armor of light, no question. And we often get so weak we can't even ask God with authority, so we just say, Lord, fill me with the desire to even have that hole closed up. Guys, let me just throw this at us. Every hole in our armor is an open door for Satan to come into us. We have to take our armor seriously. The armor of God is the resistance to the schemes of the devil. Every element of the armor that is not in place or not enforced or not um, treated with the power of God is an area of weakness that the devil can use against us. And when we're a part of an us, he can use it against the rest of us. The devil can use Christians against other Christians. If he has access through holes in their armor, he doesn't rip them out of church. He turns them into a cancer. Pretty smart, isn't it? Do you want to be that cancer? <laughs> 
Say it to God. Lord, don't let me be a cancer. Pray that in your heart or out loud. Lord, don't let me be a cancer to your body. Don't let me be the one that can bring down the whole church. Close up my armor, Lord. Do you feel that? Close up my armor. Show me the holes. Heal me of the holes. I embrace my weakness. So let's work on that now. God, we need to be shown the wisdom that Paul wrote, which was, weakness leads me to strength. And he embraced and boasted in his weaknesses. So Lord, we do. We, we boast in our human inability. Lord, we can't. Lord, we can't. We can't. We can't. Can you pray that with me? Lord, we can't. We can't. Start naming things in your heart, Lord. Oh, God. What can we not do? Everything. John 15, apart from me, you can do nothing. And nothing means nothing. So we think that we can live and have jobs and eat, and we think that's something. Oh, it's nothing. Anybody can live and eat and hold down a job. That's not the glory of God. Apart from Jesus, we cannot build the house of God. God, hold your flashlight over our hearts on this one. Guys, the discomfort, you know I've been doing this every week and I'm sorry. But you learn how to be a warrior when you wrestle with your own heart, don't you? Don't you? We learn how to be a warrior for the Lord by wrestling with our hearts first. So any wrestle is a chance for breakthrough. And breakthrough leads to freedom. And freedom is the happiest thing you can have in your life. So fight. Fight. Stand. Will you stand against the devil's schemes right now in your heart? Or do you want him to win? <laughs> He's a pretty good master for a while. Are you enjoying it? Can you stand against him? No. Nope. No more. No further. No more control. God, I would love to have us stand right now and stand against the devil's schemes. But right now, we're just healing the armor. Lord, your love is the healing balm that coats our skin and brings healing. You love us. You love us. You fight for us. You fought for us first. While we were still dead in our trespasses and sins, you sent Jesus. While we were still enemies, Christ died for us. It's not a question if you love us and want freedom or not. Lord, we're asking for you to complete our freedom. And Lord, you need to do a wrestle about this us thing. That's great that you can get individuals out to you, but you wrote seven letters to seven churches in Revelation 2 and 3. You are after local groups gathered against Satan. Would you please gather us against Satan? Would you please gather us to stand on your, your wonderful ground of Jesus Christ? Guys, do you want that? Let's stand and do this. Let's stand and do this. I got one thing that we can do. Please stand, if you will. You don't have to, but... No, it'll be awkward if you're the only one. But what? Wrestle with you. We're going to just wrestle to even desire to be one people. <laughs> That's all we're going to do. We are going to wrestle with our hearts so that we can even want to be one people. So let's start here. I'm going to ask you a question. Do what your heart says. Do you want to be one people with the people in this room? Ask that in your own heart. Do you want to be one people with the people in this room? There's another one too. Do you want to be strong in the Lord and the strength of His might? Do you want to? Do you want to be the dwelling place of God by His Spirit for the display of Himself? Do you want that? Everything is at stake on this one. 
Why else would we ever get together if we don't have these things? Why else would you ever have a church if you're not going to be able to live there in fullness and in power? God, our church is at stake, much less the mission of God. So God, let's do this. Just cry out now to the Lord. Lord, help us to want. Just copy my prayer as your heart says. Lord, help us to want. Help us to want these things. Help us to want them. Lord, wrestle with my own heart that I don't even want to want. Lord, wrestle with my heart that I don't even desire to desire you. Wrestle with my heart that I am so distracted and so caught up in my life and me and my things, Lord. Lord, wrestle with my heart that I would even desire the eternal things of Christ Jesus. Wrestle with your hearts on this. God, give us the gift of even desire. Give us the gift of even desire to be one people together in your name. Fine. We need God's help. Let's pray this. God, will you help us? <laughs> That's our prayer right now. God, help us. Pray it out loud as you will. God, help us. God, help us. Help us, God. God, help us. Doesn't he need to help us? Isn't our back to a, a, a body of water and the enemy pressing in? Don't we need the help of God? Don't we need the help of God? Oh, where does my help come from? Lord, we need the help of God. We cannot just teach our way out of this. We can't just ya 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 our way through this. We need the actual transforming power of God to come and help us. We need a miracle. We need a miracle. We need a miracle. And everything's at stake. God, we embrace weakness. Turn that into a prayer. God, help me embrace weakness. Help us. Help us to embrace our weakness. If you guys have the stomach, let's wait for the Lord for a moment. That the Lord would do for us what only He can do. Just for a moment. We'll give a moment. can't show up because it's the thing to do. So, I'm not saying, you know, I know that's implying, well, then, what do you want me to do, Matt? I don't know. Why are you doing what you're doing anyway? <laughs> Guys, we, we do need to reach this town for Jesus, and we do need to fight for each other, and we do need Jesus to be on display out of us. We need, we need all these things. And we're just getting so far down the road here, and, you know, our numbers are shrinking, and our money is shrinking, and we're losing battles in a lot of places. We just, it's just too late to play the games. Isn't it? Isn't it? We're kind of out of time. Or we're really, really, really close to out of time. <laughs> so, 
So I'm going to assume that everybody who shows up next week is here because, because they want to. Because they want to, like, may not be so. And, and because we want to head off in this direction. And, 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 and be weak together that the power of God may rest on us. And, and to be filled with the life of Jesus so that his power can rest on us and so that he can bear us through the trials and stand against Satan. We'll try to be shorter next week. But you guys can see any, the importance of why we've had to spend some time hammering through this stuff? We've got to hammer through this stuff. Because there are blockages. I don't care if 100% of everybody here was on fire for Jesus and whatever, whatever you would use to describe whatever we think we're talking about. When we come together, there's going to be a different set of barriers because we're together. Do you guys see what I'm saying by that? There are barriers against us being an us. <laughs> so even if you get 100% of people together who are all on board with whatever we're talking about here, whatever that means, there's still going to be new barriers that we have to overcome together. Do you see that? That's what we're, that's what we're committed to. And they take it. At some point, we gotta start taking it back to Satan. Wouldn't it be great to beat Satan up once in a while, and actually have kids that love Jesus? My kids do love Jesus. Maybe. <laughs> Sometimes they're just kids. All right. Sorry. It's my apology for making it so we're not. You're the suits. We'll talk more next week. Be blessed. Okay.